Are there any private member statements? I call the member for Menai. Thank you, Mr. Acting Speaker. Tonight I wanted to update, update the House on an issue which is causing a great amount of concern and fear in my community, the proposed establishment of the Moore Bank Intermodal Facility. I say proposed, but really the community and I feel that this is a bit of a joke because the proponents are powering ahead. There are two intermodals proposed, one by a private consortium, SIMTA, on the site of the Defence National Storage Distribution Centre, and the other by the federal government on the site of the land they own at the School of, the Military, of, School of Military Engineering. I have argued since I was first pre-selected to run for this seat that this is not the right location for such a facility. Mr Acting Speaker, it may be a good thing for Sydney, but at what cost to local residents? SIMTA have recently had their environmental impact statement on public exhibition, and I know many concerned local residents have made personal submissions. Up until recently, it seemed to have stalled as the federal government continues to withhold access for a rail spur across their land. Obviously, two intermodals would introduce competition for the federal government. But tonight, Mr Acting Speaker, I'd like to focus on the proposal that looks like soon to be going ahead, the federal Labor government proposal. I say federal Labor government as that's how the joint press release by Anthony Albanese and Penny Wong termed it. Officially, we are being told that it's still a proposal, but to me and the residents, it seems like it's already a done deal. There's been no environmental impact statement for the community co to comment on. There's been no consultation or even the decency of showing the community how it may impact on them. All they've done is establish an office in Canberra to take phone calls from residents in southwestern Sydney, in Canberra, where they wouldn't know the true impact and the fear of the locals. In addition, a government business enterprise, the Moore Bank Intermodal Company, has been established and now the federal Labor government has called for private companies to register their interest in developing and operating the terminal. In their press release of May 21 this year, the federal government stated that they have engaged widely with industry. Mr Acting Speaker, can I ask that they perhaps do the same with local residents? People, particularly those residing in Wattle Grove and in Kishula, have been crying out loudly that they do not want this to go ahead. And what does the federal Labor government do? Absolutely nothing. Thank you, Member Balmain. Absolutely nothing. No consultation, no assistance, no opportunity to meet part way, no opportunity to have their fears addressed. This is a facility that is set to handle up to 1.2 million containers annually. It has the capacity to handle another 500,000 containers to meet interstate demand, and it would apparently remove 1.2 million trucks each year from Sydney's roads or 3,300 3, trucks per day. These are oppressive figures, Mr Acting Speaker, but if you read between the lines, you'll see that it isn't such a rosy picture. These containers will first travel by train to the facility. They will then need to go into warehouses and be moved about by trucks, along what are essentially local roads. These local roads then used by, are now used by residents travelling to and from work, by parents taking their kids to school by local businesses, and they are already struggling under that everyday, ordinary pressure. I regularly receive complaints about the congestion and the poor quality of our roads due to increasing lo loads travelling across them. And I'm thrilled that the long-awaited widening of the M5 is happening, but this widening should be addressing and easing the current capacity. And now this freight terminal will bring even more trucks in and around our local suburbs. The congestion on the M5 will, will create rat runs down the Hume Highway, past the hospital, or along Newara and Newbridge roads to bypass it. There are lo local roads that are already under pressure. Mr Acting Speaker, we haven't had any consultation. No sorry, no hope you understand, just we stand to generate about $10 billion in economic benefits. I understand the want, I understand the needs, but there are major costs for our area. We live in the Sydney Basin. Our air quality is poor. Our asthma rates are high. We have a proposal that will bring in more pollution to local communities. We aren't talking about a site that's surrounded by industrial warehouses. We have a site that is merely metres away from homes, from schools, from community areas, and our roads are already at capacity. We may have one of the biggest hospitals in South West Sydney. In fact, we have one of the biggest hospitals in the Southern Hemisphere, but the traffic created may cut off access to it, a huge problem, particularly when you consider ambulance access. We have schools, parklands and homes nearby the year site, all of which will be affected by traffic, by noise and by increased pollution. 
We've already seen the Federal Labor Government isn't known to put re residents' needs first when they refuse to provide sound barriers along the South West Rail Link, for neighbouring and the Southern Sydney Freight Line, for neighbouring homes in Kisula and alongside the Liverpool Hospital. Mr Acting Speaker, may I have a short extension? About a minute's worth. Granted. Mr Acting Speaker, this isn't a government known for, put, known, for, known for putting residents first. We already know this would be a 20 hour a day operation. Trucks starting, trucks breaking, containers being loaded, reversing alarms. It all equates to noise and it equates to lots of it. With an almost round the clock operation, residents will be subject to light spill late at night. Floodlights will light the site to ensure that the terminal can continue the work regardless of the daylight when residents' homes and sleep are affected. Yes, it will allow more freight to be delivered to the South West Sydney by rail from Port Botany instead of road, but our backyard will become a truck parking lot instead of the suburban streets they are at the moment. This is more than simply a NIMBY issue. I know of other areas that would love this development, and primarily because they have a location that would suit it better, and primarily because that could be an area that does actually need those jobs. This site actually reduces the use of this land for jobs. But in this case, the location actually does not work. It's time the Federal Labor Government started listening to the residents and putting the needs of locals first before the benefits to themselves. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank the member for